Johannes knew that somehow he had to cast metal letters by using a mold. But how do you make a mold? A mold just doesn't come running out of the forest and say, hey Gutenberg, here we are. You have to have some kind of device to create the mold, and that's called a punch. And so to make a punch for letters, he got a piece of carbon steel about the size of the instrument he to make, and very carefully and it's tempered, it's drew a letter on workable. the very end. And so he took Copying this exactly little the way piece of metal, soft steel, to his workbench, and he had a stand like this with a notch in it there, so he could hold that shank steady. But first of all, he blackened the end in the candle like this, turning it. Now he wasn't trying to get it hot, he was coating it with the black carbon that comes off that candle as it burns. Because this is the Dark Ages and anything new or different, people were kind of afraid of it. So after he had carefully drawn his letter, then he went to his workbench, beginning with his larger file now, he begins to file that letter out on the end of that piece of soft metal. And he works and works and works until finally he had the letter B carved out on the end of that piece of metal. Then he tempered the metal, that is he heated it up to red hot, plunges it immediately into cold water and that's what makes it really hard. So now he has a really hard letter filed out in relief on the end of this piece of metal. And so that letter is now standing up. And this became his punch to make a mold. But what does he make his mold out of? He can't use tempered steel of course, but there were softer metals. And so he finally came up with copper. Compared to tempered steel, copper is rather soft, but it's still a hard, rigid metal. So he placed his hard punch letter against the softer copper, strikes it with a hammer, and now it makes an impression now of the B down into that metal. So that letter is now sunk into the metal. And when he pours metal in there, it's going to go into that sunken area and take that same shape. So now he has his mold, but he's got to figure out some kind of device to make big enough pieces that he can pick them up and use them. He's actually got to have a duplicate of his punch. So that's when he came up with this device, the hand tie caster, considered to be the most important single invention in the history of the world because it's the basic thing that he had to invent in order to make metal type. It consists of two halves. And he would have had to hand file this thing on a piece of soft steel and then temper it to make it really hard and figure out all of these angles between the two halves exactly opposite one another. But look at the top part there, it's kind of slanted and when you put it together it's going to make a funnel to bring the metal down into the bottom part here where the actual piece of type will be cast. Now he made each half sort of L shaped And leaving that one down and turning this one up and fitting it together as he carefully filed it to do so, it forms a long tunnel. And it slides back and forth to take care of the different widths of letters. An I, of course, is very narrow, but an M is very wide. Our capital B is fairly wide also, so now it can go on the bottom of that long channel, clamps together to fit that particular width of letter, and this is a big spring that holds it in position goes in that little notch on the opposite side from where we pounded in our B. So now look at what he has. The B mold on the bottom of this long channel rising up from it. And when he pours the metal in there, it's going to go down into the bottom into the mold. But then it's going to come up through that channel to the top. And when he breaks it out, it's going to be virtually the same thing as his punch. Now, the next thing he has to figure out is what metal to pour in there. Single metals either expand or shrink when they cool. And so he came up with a mixture of metals that would just barely expand slightly as it cooled. He came up with 80% lead, which shrinks, 13% antimony, which swells, and 7% tin to make it a little more smooth and hard. And he came up with printer's metal, used from his day right down to the present day. 
We've heated the metal up here in a little jeweler's pot to 600 degrees, and when it's that hot, it runs just like water. Now I'm going to put my glove on here because I'm actually going to cast a piece of type for you. Exactly the way Gutenberg invented it there in Mainz, Germany, about 1450. As I pour the metal in there, I'll lift the hand type caster like that. That was an essential movement to help force the metal down into the bottom, into that mold. It was called throwing for face. So here we go. There's our throwing for face. Now I can immediately break the hand type caster apart. And there's the metal that I just poured down through that channel into the mold. And we break the mold out, leaving the mold on top there, break it off. And there's our casted piece of type. There's our B. Now we have to break off the sprue here, which came down through the channel there, which is the entry port. And there's our finished piece of type.